I am super stoked. We got King of the Baggers season 2024 coming up. Uh, Lickety split lurch. (laughs) That's quick from what I've learned. That is the official definition. I appreciate that. They're going to kick off in Daytona. uh, And uh, like I say, uh, at the time of release of this, like real quick, a lot of races, uh, nine different tracks, right? Eight tracks. Uh, they were doing one twice. Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. Eight tracks, but so that would be 18 races. Coda, I think they're doing twice. Yeah, That's right. Yeah. Yep. 18 yep. races. If you guys haven't seen King of the Baggers races, I'm just telling you whether you think you like racing, whether you think it's so much more pure to me than all the other, you know, typical run-of-the-mill professional sports that, you know, people watch. Uh, these guys are passionate. They freaking, uh, they're super talented, athletic, uh, to me, put more on the line than a lot of other professional sports. Uh, so if you haven't seen it, I'm just telling you, give it a watch this year. Um, I know once I watched, uh, the first, uh, season, we're both, uh, Moto America live plus members. Yep. Um, and that's how you can get the races live. You can get the quals, the warm ups, uh, you know, the uh, everything live as it happens. If you can't make it to the track, obviously, uh, you can get it later on YouTube, but it's just a repeat of what's already happened. And you already know because it's all over social media. So that's difficult. <laughs> Uh, you can just get it for the King of the Baggers se- season, Motor Live Plus, and uh, get the subscription and then obviously cancel or whatever you want to do. Uh, but that's where it's at. And I'm telling you, uh, once you see it, uh, it's addicting. Uh, Lurch, do you agree? It is. It's been a, l- a lot of fun to watch it since the early days, you know, the, the privateer days when they just it seems like they all had a good idea one night when they're at the bar. Said, <laughs> hey, let's go race some baggers, you know, and seeing what those stock bikes that they souped up have turned into now, it's it's impressive and it's a lot of fun to watch. And it's just something different about the baggers and the big V-twin and the the sound that those things make. It's it's really cool. I've gotten addicted to it. Yep, it's blowing up, guys. I'm not kidding. It's not going anywhere. It's only getting bigger and faster. It's like a snowball rolling down a hill. Uh, so uh, don't miss out and uh, definitely... Think about becoming a part of the King of the Baggers motorcycle racing community because I'm there. We're there. Want to ride longer? Tired of a sore and achy ass? Then fix it with a high-quality butt buffer seat cushion. Head over to lawbindingbeggar.com for slash store. Check out our full line of butt buffer seat cushions. All right. A lot of stuff happening in the Law Abiding Biker store. You'll want to know about this. So, these are the shoes, uh, one of my favorite shoes, probably my favorite right now. I've been, these are protective motorcycle riding shoes. I've been riding uh, with them for well over a year uh, daily on during my police motorcycle duties. Uh, and then on the long trips that we took all the way down to Death Valley, I've ridden them in rain, I've ridden them in shine, I've ridden them in cold, I've ridden them in hot, and everything in between and not to mention the fact that I've worn them while walking along longer distances around town after hours on trips, um, obviously during my day-to-day duties. These are an all-around great shoe, great looking shoe, uh, great protective shoe. Uh, I think you'll really like them. They are so comfortable. Uh, I'm not going to break them down. They do have the BOA system. That's one plus to them. Lurch just got hooked up with a pair. These are the uh, Icon Patrol 3 boots. There was a Patrol 2 version, which I did a video on a long time ago. The, we sold those out, uh, and uh, now they came out some time ago uh, with this model, the Patrol 3 boot. And uh, they're a reasonable price. They're an investment. Uh, but nonetheless, these things are going to last you for multiple, many years, depending on how you're riding. Mine are still holding up well, I did a video on it. If you just head over to the Law Abiding Biker Store and you just uh, type in Icon Patrol 2 or Patrol, or Patrol 3 Boots or Patrol 3 Boots, however you want to do it, at the bottom of all our listing where there are available videos, you'll see the YouTube video uh, where I actually go over these things um, and uh, in, in detail to kind of show you what you're looking at and why I like them so much. And then we did a recent live video 
Uh, it's on the YouTube channel. I don't know if I embedded that one in the store. I should probably embed that one in the store. I don't think I've done it yet. But after this pod, oh, did I? Yeah, I'm looking okay. right now. Oh, so they're both yeah, there. I did. I, I did well, Lurch. Yeah, <laughs> okay. good job, man. Um, so both videos or maybe are there. not. I take it back. There, there is a video there, but it's your original one. The original. I'll have to add the other one. So I'll post the most recent. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, we appreciate you shopping in our store. Uh, very much guys. If you want to get hooked up with these shoes, we've got them in stock ready to ship to you all different sizes guys. And all the details are in those videos and over on that listing. And uh, they are the icon patrol three boots. I highly recommend them. And uh, you know that I'm not just pulling them out of a box and recommending them. I've actually tested the bejesus <laughs> out of these things. <laughs> yeah. I'm loving mine. I just got them in right out of the box. They fit great. I love that boa system. I'm really looking forward to running them this year. Lurch has been using them for roll night in the house. He walks around, uh, walks in the bedroom. The old lady's there. He's got nothing, buck naked, nothing but the patrol three boots on. Is that weird? It's not a good look. (laughs) You got to break them in, right? (laughs) That's true. That's that's one way to break them in, bro. We do appreciate you guys. Uh, Lurch will put a link in the show notes to this episode uh, if you want to get, get a direct link to those. But nonetheless, they're over in the store. We are adding products like crazy. We are a drag specialties parts unlimited dealer now, guys. Uh, so we have access to everything. We're adding a lot of things we believe in in the store. That's going to continue. So make sure you continually get over to the store and search around and check out what we have to offer. With that said, if you don't, see it in our store. Nobody lists everything that's in drag specialties. That would be insane. I, I can't imagine they could. You couldn't keep up on it because you're talking about little bolts and stuff. Yeah. So what I'm saying is if you guys, if you see it in drag specialties online or parts unlimited, we can get it for you. Obviously you can't get it. You're not a dealer, but you can view it online. So whatever you see, your pipes, intakes, stage kits. I mean, you guys know, the name says it alone, Drag Specialties Parts Unlimited. All you got to do, you want to support us, bootstrap company of bikers, just trying to help as many bikers as we can worldwide. We're not the big guys. We care. Uh, you know us. We're going to treat you well. We're going to get the product out to you. But just email us over at the Law Abiding Biker Store. Just hit the contact button at the top right and just shoot us an email. Say, hey, I'm looking for this part. Uh, I'm looking for these pipes, this intake, whatever tires. We do have tires listed in the store now, so we are selling tires, guys. We are selling a lot more stuff. Uh, So, uh, again, we're blowing up here in 2024, but we appreciate The only way we can do that is with your support. So hit us up in that contact form, what you want, and uh, we'll get back to you lickety split and uh, uh, let you know uh, we can get it and get it on the way to you. We'll just invoice you and all that. And we can get it to you just as quick as any of the big guys, because that's how it works these days with shipping. It's not a big deal. Get it packaged up. Oscar uh, or Lurch be packaging it up. You put any other things in the package for him, Lurch, that I don't know about? Well, there's one good time that still goes in there. We've carried that on over from <laughs> Big Daddy. In every box, there is a good time. You open up the box and poof, it just pops out and the good time's there. So experience it when you open a package from us. I want you all as you're opening that package for the first time, I want you to feel that good time. <laughs> All right. So dumb. Hey, my colleagues. <laughs> Zero 3D has a wide variety of innovative products for your Harley Davidson and a brand new line for the all new Honda Goldwing named Gold Strike. Like Top gold. quality affordable chrome lighting and comfort products. Zero Gold Strike are the motorcycle LED lighting innovators for CAN bus plug and play system compatibility. Head over to lawbindingbiker.com forward slash store and check out our full line of Zero 3D products. And you better believe Ciro has a bike. Uh, they're 3D imaging it, a new 24 model, roadie and street, and they're doing the new fairings. And I cannot wait to see the products that they're going to come out with uh, for the new bikes and new uh, redesign. Uh, I have talked to them and they are working on it. These things take just a little bit of time because I'm, uh, yeah, I just want to see them and, and get them out in the wild. Uh, and you can bet those are going to be in our store. All right, guys, we've got a great episode for you guys as we dig in here to King of the Baggers season 2024. Welcome back, you freaking bikeholics. This is the podcast for the motorcycle majority, the big MM, also known as the 99% large and in charge of the motorcycle scene. That's right. More than any type in history by being here, by listing your part of what we call the hashtag biker revolution. Oh, yeah. We do have just one question for you. What are you waiting for, my colleagues? Mount up and let us take you on another wild-ass ride. 
Ryan Erlacher here, your host of the Law Abiding Biker Podcast, and your high tech redneck. There you go. All right, guys. So we're going to dive right in here uh, momentarily uh, to our awesome interview. We've got uh, Kyle Wyman and James Raspoli, both factory team racers for Harley Davidson, the motor company. Of course, James just got picked up. He was racing for Vance and Hines. He's now over factory rider for Harley. Uh, but we dive into everything surrounding uh, King of the Baggers and kind of from its inception all the way up to the point where it's at. And of course, also talk about the upcoming season and some great content uh, that Hardy Davidson, you guys will definitely want to stick around for this. There's some announcements about some things coming out very soon on the YouTube channel, or at least in the Hardy Davidson app. Uh, amazing. A lot of things going on. We're going to break it down in this interview. We do want to mention we uh, have a free video Lurch wants to talk about. Yes, we do. This one's called the brand new 2024 Harleys. I'm not supposed to show you about. And uh, you get into the uh, new 2024 King of the Bagger bike. So uh, perfect video for this episode. You can uh, watch that video by clicking in uh, the link in the show notes. And if you guys hear my voice, uh, I am fighting a cold, so I apologize for that. But we do want to thank some of our uh, newest patron members. Of course, we love our regular sponsors up front, but these folks are also a direct reason we're still coming to you after 11 years strong. And these are some of our newest ones we want to thank. We would like to thank Benjamin Lerdahl of West Jordan, Utah. He is a top-tier member. Tony McHugh of West Bloomfield, Michigan, and Victor Burnett of Danielson, Connecticut. Nice. We thank you guys so much. You mean so much to us, uh, the patron members. Basically, uh, you can pledge a certain amount per piece of content. No risk to you because you can put a monthly cap. There are benefits such as t-shirts and stickers. You get access to the private Facebook group, which is a troll-free zone. Nothing but bikers helping and connecting with other bikers. Access to our live video broadcasts and chat. Premium videos up on request. And of course, access to those ride, meetup, and events. All right, guys. With that said, uh, we are just going to dive right into the interview. This will also, just so you know, it'll be here on the audio podcast, uh, audio only version, but we also recorded it via video and that at the time of the release of this, if you want to go see the video version, it will be up on the Law Abiding Biker YouTube channel. Let's do it. Awesome. Well, I know I got an hour with you guys, so I appreciate uh, both of you being here and uh, welcome to the uh, uh, Law Abiding Biker YouTube channel and podcast. Uh, so we'll just dive in here. Uh, let's start, James, with you. Uh, I just want to get like a little background on you. Like, how did you get to where you are racing uh, King of the Baggers and kind of your race career for the audience? Yeah. So, for me, I came up through the dirt track ranks. That's how actually I know Kyle. Um, we raced against each other uh, all through our, you know, amateur careers at a young age. He was always a little bit in front of me with uh, motorcycles progressing through. And I grew up racing dirt track out of New Hampshire. Uh, my first race was at Jolly Rogers. I got dead last. I went backwards around the track. They gave me a trophy, but you know, I was hooked. I rode up and down my driveway in New Hampshire, very small, uh, driveway. And, you know, just went from there, um, through the ranks, sixties, eighties, and so on until I got to the pro ranks, stayed in dirt track. And that's where I kind of made my switch to road racing. Uh, we always thought, you know, going the, the Nikki Hayden route, uh, was the way to go. Um, and dirt track wasn't quite doing it. So we ended up going road racing. We did pretty well, won a couple of championships, and uh, I proceeded to road for Michael Jordan, National Guard, and then I went off to Europe, did some super sports, super bike, and super stock there. And I decided to come back in 2019, kind of broke, you know, licking my wounds a little bit, even though I had a pretty successful run, just quite didn't, didn't work for me. And I got back into dirt track, got on a Harley, won a championship in dirt track, and then that's what kind of led me into the King of the Baggers was there was this new run up Kyle and O'Hara were kind of battling Harley versus Indian. And I got an opportunity to ride for Vance and Hines. And that's kind of how things took off. I got on the bike first time at Daytona, did pretty well. And 
was able to latch on to the momentum of King of the Baggers and really it helped propel me to get on, you know, last year, have a really good run. And then now to be a factory rider. Yeah. Very cool. So I got to ask in the early days, uh, it's still fairly new, um, obviously, but in the early days, I know Vance and Hines picked you up. Is that something that you saw and were like, I'm going to seek Vance and Hines and I want to race a bagger really fast on a track? Or is that something that they kind of came to you about? So I was in a unique position because I really didn't have a ride in 2022. Like I came off the dirt track thing with latest motors racing. Um, I was riding a Harley. So I wanted to stay somehow in the Harley family because I, I was somewhat in that circle. Um, and Vance and Hines, to be honest, Terry turned me down because he had Hayden and Taylor Knapp already. And last minute, Hayden rode a, uh, got a ride and essentially couldn't ride the bagger. So I got the call first and I just agreed. I just said, I'll do it. And really that's how it kind of kicked off. I mean, I, I don't know if I would have taken anything, but the Vance and Hines bike, we knew they could be the most competitive without being a factory effort. Yeah, cool. Kyle, let's turn to you. Uh, kind of your background and how you got to where you are uh, king, racing king of the baggers here for Harley. Yeah, I mean, uh, as far as the early days of racing, very similar to James, you know, growing up in the Northeast doing amateur racing. Um, I was fortunate enough to grow up in a Harley Davidson dealership. So that was kind of the, you know, where we actually lived was right behind the shop and, and grew up in that motorcycling industry since the beginning. And I remember racing James and a lot of the guys that we race against like Bobby Fong and Jake Lewis and Hayden Gillum. Like we all grew up racing each other. We've known each other for 25 years, which is kind of cool. Um, for me, I turned pro in flat track at 16, like kind of all of us did and, and won some races and stuff. And then, uh, same thing, just head turned to road racing because it just seemed like that was where the money was. That's where the future could possibly be for, to make a career out of it. So, uh, went road racing, raced all sorts of different stuff, including the, uh, the XR 1200 series, Harley Davidson Sportster class, which was like from 2010 to 2014. And really from like 2012 up until 21, when uh, Harley Davidson picked me up, I was chasing uh, the dream of Superbike and uh, raced six seasons in Moto America Superbike. Got a bunch of podiums on three different manufacturers over those six years. And uh, yeah, when Harley called me to see if I wanted to be a part of that, you know, when I understood how serious they were about it, it was a no brainer. So 2021 was the last year I was racing my Ducati Superbike, and the first year of King of the Baggers. I did both that first year. And then for 2022, I pretty much committed to Harley Davidson full time. I did a couple fill in rides for a couple teams in Superbike that year. And then, uh, yeah, fast forward to 23, 24, 25. Now I'm going to be under contract for the next two years and riding the Harley only. Very cool. So I got to, so you got both factory riders, obviously for Harley Davidson. And I guess it's fair to say, am I assuming both of you are just dedicated to riding the, for the factory Harley Davidson? You're not doing other disciplines like Hayden does other, right? He's doing super bike too. Is that right? Are you guys just doing that this season? Yeah, we're both fully committed to Harley Davidson. And I mean, it's, it's no small task doing that now. I mean, we're going to have 18 races this year, plus plus nine challenge races, you know, nine rounds. We just added another round to join the MotoGP event at Circuit of the Americas in April. So it's a, it's a full schedule of racing. And I think in the early days when we had the three races and then we had, you know, then we had seven races, it was like, I, I, I still want to do more racing and that's why we were, I was doing some fill-ins and stuff here and there, but come last year with 14 races and now this year with 18, it's a full-time gig and I'm, I'm happy to be exclusive with Harley. Yeah. I'll be curious to see as it goes along, like you say, more races and more races, it's going to be harder and harder for guys to be dual 
discipline, so to speak. So, uh, James, sure. turning back to you. Uh, so, riding for Vance and Hines, obviously, you got picked up late uh, 23, uh, signed as a factory rider for Harley. Can you tell us what changes for you coming from Vance and Hines and, and going to Harley Davidson, full, riding for them full time? From what perspective? Uh, I guess from the perspective of opportunities, um, you know, the bikes, uh, everything that surrounds that um, riding for a factory team. Yeah. So for me, just getting the the opportunity to ride for a factory has been a dream, right? Like that's literally what we all aspire to do as little kids is grow up to try to ride for a factory. So I was getting pretty late in my career. And to be able to get the call to ride for factory Harley Davidson, something that growing up from dirt track, watching all those guys, you know, Scotty Parker and so on, Chris Carr ride for Harley Davidson in that realm was pretty cool for me. And right then and there, I was like, you know, it's just something special. The differences are, you know, there's a lot more media that goes with Harley Davidson, um, which is good for me because I enjoy that stuff and I think I'm a little bit more of a personality to step out so it kind of fits my role and as far as like bikes and stuff go you know Vance and Hines runs an amazing program they haven't you know they haven't been around this long you know not just not for a reason so they know what they're doing over there factory Harley Davidson has really ramped things up on their sides I wouldn't say one's better or worse they're just different um, you know, and Kyle specifically has built this motorcycle, whereas the Vance and Hines had a lot of, uh, development from me with some help from Harley Davidson. So it was kind of a hybrid. So there's just a lot of differences. It's really hard to kind of nitpick what's better or worse because they're just, they're kind of just different and they have a little bit different way they go about it. But both programs are really, really good. Um, the factory is, you know, everything's just a little bit a little bit bigger, a little bit more, you know, um, it's, it's pretty, it's kind of hard to put into words, you know, it's just, uh, feels a little bit more special when I went there and saw, you know, all the people working, um, the entire factory and how many people are behind this program, you know, it just adds a little bit extra to, you know, when I'm training, when I'm doing things just to give it my all because they're behind the scenes, giving it everything too. Yeah. Uh, so, Pre pre season, we're getting. We'll talk about that in a bit. Leading up to Daytona here, uh, I got to go down last year, Kyle, and uh, you know, pre season in Arizona. You guys were practicing on the track. Where's this year, Ben? Uh, you guys been practicing? I know we were down at Las Vegas Motor Speedway recently. I'm sure you did some down there. Can you kind of uh, tell me either of you what's going on, or both of you with pre season here? Yeah, we had uh, we had one test in December down in Arizona. And, uh, we did the Vegas event. I don't know if you call out a test. It was okay. more of a photo shoot and show you guys kind of what we got going this year. And then, uh, and then we were able to do another test back at podium club where you were last, uh, February. Uh, we just finished that test about a week and a half ago. So, um, not testing as much as people might think. Um, but we put a lot of work in at, at home to, you know, make the improvements in the shop. So when we do test, we make the most of those laps and, and get quality days on track. So uh, I feel really good about where we are. I think we're way ahead of where we've been in years past as far as preparation and just from an operational standpoint with the whole team. The bike has take, taken steps forward as well in a, in a few areas that will be very beneficial for us. So uh, we're looking forward to it. Awesome, man. I'm excited for the season. Uh, I got to see down at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. You guys, uh, you know, brought the bikes out for the first time. We're kind of under an embargo at that time, but it's out now. Uh, can you talk about uh, whatever you are allowed to talk about as far as some of the changes uh, for the 2024 bikes? Oh, take there you it. go, Kyle. There you I go, rode Kyle. the 23 bikes. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. Well, to, to answer your question, uh, I don't know, a few things here and there, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, obviously, yeah, Daytona. Uh, I think, I think though the, the biggest thing you can see immediately is that we've moved to the 2024 bodywork shape of the new Roguelide. So, um, that's really cool for us to continue 
kind of uh, making changes along with the product that comes out. So we've got the new fairing, the new bags, and uh, th- those are going to help us hopefully in the aerodynamic department. Um, we're working on a lot of different things with the suspension, trying new things, um, validating new parts, validating new engine components. We have to make sure that we get the mileage put on these components before we bring them to the track so they are proven to be reliable. And uh, I feel like we've really done that. And I think uh, we're going to continue to see lap times fall over last year at every track we go to. Yeah. Awesome. So you guys have, uh, before this year, you went with the water cooled, right? The water cooled heads in this one now in the 24, or am I wrong on that? Yeah. So the new, uh, the new cooling setup in the 24 heads has a little bit more of length of water cooling and also routes the cooling to the rear cylinder first and then to the front, which is also, something we learned on the racetrack last year that we've actually implemented into the the street bikes for this year is the routing of the cooling. Um, the twin cooled head is something that came out initially for the trike and ultra classic models that had those coolers and those lower fairings in front of your feet. Um, we've now implemented that across the board in touring. So, you know, that gives us an opportunity to use that little bit of water cooling around the, uh, the exhaust valves to help us keep those head temperatures down a little bit more. Hey, Bikeaholics, searching for new and exciting motorcycle products? Zero 3D has products you dream about for your bike. Check out their wide variety of innovative products for Harley-Davidson and Honda Goldwing motorcycles. Zero 3D's got your back with chrome and black parts, lighting, and other comfort products. No modifying, cutting, grinding, or welding for an easy installation. That equals less time installing and more time riding. Zero 3D has a design team of riders with over 40 years of experience with a passion for design and innovation. Zero and Goldstrike are the motorcycle LED lighting innovators for CAN bus plug and play system compatibility. They pride themselves on great customer service. Got a question? Get in touch with them via email at sales at zero3d.com or give them a call at 715 808 0027. Check at your local Harley or Honda dealership and ask for Zero or Gold Strike parts. A new leader has emerged to so check out Zero 3D's custom line of Gold Strike products for the all new Honda Goldwings. Better yet, help support us and head on over to the Law Abiding Biker store and check out our full line of Zero 3D products. Cool. All right, uh, James, turning back to you here. I know we're leading up to Daytona, and I got to ask, bro, are you going to try another tank slapper on one of the turns there? Dude, you got to tell me about this. It's one of the best clips, dude. Uh, I'm glad you're okay, because I about uh, crapped my pants when I saw that going on, man. Tell me about that. Yeah, I still have that underwear, man. Uh, it's just <laughs> yeah. hung up. But I mean, Why? if you I could guarantee throw that out, man. <laughs> <laughs> if I uh, if I could guarantee that I wouldn't crash and get the views, a hundred percent, I'd do it every day of the week. But <laughs> there's no one guarantees when that thing's slapping like that. I don't think we'll see that, but who knows? I mean, we're going to be racing uh, as much as we can and at a hundred percent. So no guarantees. But last year was pretty scary. I get asked it a lot. Uh, could I have saved it if it happened again? Probably not. I mean, I think it was just to be able to do that, lock back in, Kyle have a problem and a win. Odds were in my favor that day. Somebody else was looking out for me. And, you know, that's really all I can say is because I just did instinctual stuff. I mean, when you go back and look at the clip and you go, man, what did you do? How would you do it? And for anybody else that would go through that scenario, I just locked in with my arms and if I'll tell you if my one of my like feet came off I would have been through the air fence but luckily it just kind of wiggled itself out and that's something about these motorcycles is they tend to wiggle a little bit and you just kind of ride it and ride it and ride it and I think that's maybe a little bit too far. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the limit there if you've ever seen a limit. So, uh, yeah. well, we're glad you're okay because, that, that, yeah, that got kind of scary there. Well, we hope better for you, obviously, going down to Daytona uh, this year. Um, let's talk about some of the stuff going on. So, obviously, King of the Baggers, I've been following it close and had a lot of opportunities, um, you know, last spring to go down to preseason and all that. Uh, 
I'm excited about it. And I know Harley's, obviously, you said there's a lot more media, James, you know, a, along with the factory team. And they are pushing it, which is good. It's good for the sport. I think it's good for motorcycle racing. But one of the recent things that we got to talk about is you guys, uh, Harley released, I think it was just a couple of weeks ago, but it's the video that's on the channel, on Harley's channel. If you guys haven't seen it, check it out. But it's named from Snow Glide to Rogue Glide, uh, introducing Harley Davidson's 2024 factory race bikes. It's a little like two and a half minute promo, but it's well done. Uh, and y- yeah, and you know, you know, every Harley fanatic like me wants a freaking Snow Glide. So you got to tell me about <laughs> this thing, you guys. And and this thing obviously exists, kind of how it came to be, and maybe a little bit of background about where you actually filmed that and wrote it and how it actually performed. Just let's just uh, throw it out there. I know a lot of people want to know about the Snow Glide. So, um, well, I give you the background on the Snow Glide. That's something that we. Uh, The team put together just as a little side project during the winter, uh, about a year and a half ago, I think, going into last winter. And they put uh, my brother Travis's bodywork on it with the number 10 and kind of leaked a photo of it just to see what would happen. And it kind of went viral everywhere. But we never put out anything actually riding it um, until this past winter. And I still have not ridden it. James is the only one that actually (laughs) rode it. And uh, we we updated the bodywork to the new CVOST for that video. It's that same bike as before, but James can uh, you can kind of take it away on your experience. Yes, it was insane. To be honest, when I got the phone call and we did the first like video meetings, hey storyboards, this that and the other, it was like, hey James, we're gonna do this thing and we're gonna have you know the snow glide. We don't really know if you're going to ride it yet. We don't know, you know, we, depending on how everything works out. And I was like, if I'm good, I mean, I'm no stone double. I'm going to do it. I'm riding it. And so <laughs> we get there and luckily snow hit pretty significantly as we got there to film. And I'll tell you the first time I got on it was in that clip where I roll up and Kyle, um, I forgot what you said, but we have that little into our, uh, dialogue and i was like i don't know if i'm gonna be able to ride this like this thing's heavy and it doesn't really turn well but it was i literally just had to do a little small little ride and i was like i don't know the next day i was able to get on it and to be honest it was really cool it was really fun it's harder than people think in uh fresh powder it's amazing you can kind of ride it like a snowboard or a jet ski kind of deal where you really float in and lean with it and like kind of hang off it and it just floats around um the hardest part was getting back and doing multiple takes going through the same lines at crossroads pretty easily and uh it's really heavy like when things kind of go around like that yeah well it 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 was fun anyways obviously uh we all just want to see it just cuz it's funny obviously that would not be a great thing to actually take <laughs> out in the mountains uh you get that thing stuck or screwed but they have that somewhere obviously right they're going to hang on to that thing or it'll just I'm be not sitting sure. at the, it'll be sitting I'm at sorry, the PDC guys. okay you know just waiting for the next project i'm sure right right yeah no doubt no doubt well it was a lot of fun and i'll say uh, the video is fun. Um, Hardy Davidson over the past, I'll just say, uh, it tends, you know, corporate, obviously a little bit more serious. Uh, I know a lot of us that watched it were happy because you guys were able to put a little bit of humor in it. And this, the, the snow glide alone, let alone you two, you know, and him showing up and uh, you just shaking your head at him, you know, kind of deal. So I appreciate, I think that's good. And I think, uh, I think it was uh, obviously good for Harley to to start putting stuff out like that and showing some of the humorous side of you guys. Cause I don't take anything too seriously. So yeah. Was it fun making yeah. that, that video? It was a, it was a really, really fun shoot. There was a lot of laughing going on when we were doing our acting bits and <laughs> uh, doing, you know, kind of improv like different reactions and interactions between us when he pulled up on the snow glide or when we were walking in that dark room, you know, we did a bunch of different takes and, you know, sometimes you'd have to throw a take out because we just bust out laughing halfway through it. So <laughs> it was a lot of fun to do that and something kind of special. And it's, yeah, like I, like you said, it's really cool to see Harley kind of 
branching out and letting it uh letting it hang loose a little bit yeah yeah i think it's really good for the brand for sure you guys i i bless you you're official actors now you didn't know it but you're hollywood's your next yeah. move okay <laughs> I, don't, I don't know man i don't know it seems like uh every time we've done two shoots together now and kyle usually just gets it done and i'm sat there and like they're like all right, James, take 27. <laughs> like, they're like, hey, man, like, we're going to need you to be a little bit more serious. Hey, man, we need you to loosen up. I'm like, man, I'm not an actor. Like, I don't, I don't do this job. <laughs> yeah, well, you, both, you did good. And I was telling Kyle while you were away, it, it was good to see some humor in those videos. So I hope uh, Harley keeps going with that. Just let you guys kind of have a lot of fun with it. Let's move into, uh, I got to ask you guys both this. Uh, so... When this first started, King of the Baggers, um, obviously, James, you talked a little bit about how you got into it, um, and Kyle, but I have to imagine you guys coming from different disciplines. Um, when you first saw Baggers on a track, and you're like, somebody approached you, uh, you know, and said, Hey, here's the deal. We want you to grab this really heavy bagger and we want you to take it a hundred plus around this track and it's going to be really cool and it's going to blow up. What's as racers, uh, what's going through your mind at that time? Um, did you at all think this is freaking ridiculous? Like who would do this and who's going to watch this? Tell me kind of your mindset at that point in the early days. Uh, I mean, I'll tell you that I was not a believer. <laughs> like I'm just, I'll be straight. I was like, uh, eh, this isn't for me. It's kind of like, I don't know. I don't know about stock bikes rolling around on the, on the floorboards, just any other, I got asked a quite a few different teams wanted me early on, but with my original deal, I couldn't ride any of the bikes. Uh, when Kyle rode it, it was a little different. Like things moved on quite quickly and there was like, uh, all right. Yeah. There's a little bit of issues, both sides, as far as, you know, development and things, but man, they're not going too bad. Like I remember that road Atlanta race going like, okay. Like, and I sat on Kyle's bike there and it's super early stages, but I was like, you know what? Like this has got like a little bit of road race five into it. I'm like, this might have some legs. And then to see the reaction of the public, like comments, shares, it went like viral everywhere, millions of views all over the place. I, everybody kind of went, hold on, well, we're going to have to grab onto this a little bit. And so I started seriously kind of looking uh, when the second seat went to Travis, I tried obviously to put my name in that hat. You know, like just to see, hey, like what what could happen? So it was already in that motion for me, like, hey, can I get on one? But it was always like, can I get on one with something else? You know, get into the paddock and then can I ride a bagger as well? Um, until obviously now it's just taken over the Nova Free World. Kyle, any thoughts on? Uh, I was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, James, James, were you at the first uh, inaugural exhibition race they did in 2020 or no? In Laguna? Yeah. No, I wasn't. I saw so, it and I was like, yeah. <laughs> I, don't know, I was guys. there. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I was there and I, I remember distinctively saying to somebody, I don't want any part of this. <laughs> <laughs> at least you're and, honest. Uh, I, I am honest. I, I have to say, I was like, this is not for me. I am a super bike rider and that's it. And, uh, come January, I get a call from Harley Davidson. And I think that really changed everything because from, from where it was as like a kind of privateer, uh, builder type of class for Harley Davidson to kind of throw their hat in and say, we want to do this for real and we want to win that's when I knew that I had to grab hold of the opportunity because you just never know where it's going to go. And, you know, the people and the the passion and the, the resources that Harley Davidson has to turn it into something that it's obviously turned into now. I, I would love to say I made a genius move and I saw how big it was going to get. I, I can't say that, you know, but I knew that it was something I could regret taking them up on. And I just dove into it and it's been my mission and our whole team's mission since that 
very first time we rode the bike to just develop it into something that is truly incredible. And my goal has been to try to relate it back to all my superbike experience and try to build a superbike out of a road glide. And if we're not there yet, we're pretty damn close. So it's a pretty amazing machine. Yeah. So, uh, piggybacking off that, uh, interestingly, it's come a long ways in a short amount of time. So I want to talk a little bit about, you know, what you guys see, maybe just a, a broad overview of some of the massive changes that have been made and what needed to happen, uh, kind of to get it to the level is that because, uh, the way I understand it, and you guys can please correct me if I'm wrong on this, but you guys on these baggers now are putting down lap times that of super sport bikes or they're close to, can you kind of tell how, you know, a broad overview of how it's developed so quick and where you're at in comparison to those bikes? I mean, it's always just been, you know, what's the next thing? What's the squeaky wheel, so to speak? And early on, it was shifting. It was ergonomics. It was, you know, can... Get them off the ground. Can can these wheels even withstand this kind of weight and force? You know, just everything is completely new because of the beast you're actually dealing with. And then it came down to, okay, we want to make some power how do we manage heat? I mean, we were, I think that first week weekend at road Atlanta, we used four engines. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was like, and that was like, we did like a total of 30 laps the whole weekend, you know? And, you know, nowadays we're making tremendously more horsepower than that. And we're putting, you know, three, 400 miles on engines during test weeks. And I can't overstate, how much work has gone into developing those engines to be able to withstand the abuse that we're giving them week in and week out. And, uh, and, and it's truly trickled down into the production of new models, especially like the CVO ST that came out this year. Like all the engineers that are working on the race team are either also working on production or they're plugged into the same teams that are working on production. So this isn't a separate team and, and all of the things we learn directly translate into the new components for uh, product development. So have you guys seen, uh, you know, motorcycle racing overall, every sport has an upsetter. It seems like at some point, and I just kind of following it. I, I, I think that King of the Baggers kind of came in and has upset a little bit. Uh, with that said, there could always be a little bit of, you know, the traditional superbike racers and things like that looking at King of the Baggers. Have, have you guys seen, I know the racing community seems like from what I've learned about is pretty tight knit, but have you guys had any fallout from that or people still looking at it? Like, what are you guys even doing out here with those bikes kind of deal within the motorcycle racing scene? I don't, uh. Uh, it's just noise now. Okay. I mean, at first, like, you, you try to defend what we're doing, but it doesn't matter. I mean, the most popular things in the world are the most polarizing. And, you know, if you're talking about social media, it's just a cesspool, right? And the same yeah. people commenting that baggers don't belong out there are the people commenting that Marquez should re- retire from MotoGP. Like, they're just, they're just there to throw shade on whatever's in front of them. So... No, I mean, it's taken the world by storm. We're going to the world stage next month. There's a reason that Dorna and MotoGP want baggers at their event. And it's because of how much impact it's had in the last few years in such a short period of time. And yeah, they're they're here to stay. I, I truly believe that bagger racing is here to stay because I would argue that there's no more pure racing from a production racing standpoint than any manufacturer racing their number one selling motorcycle. And I think we're the only manufacturer selling their or racing their number one selling motorcycle. When you look at Same. World Superbike, those are not their number one selling motorcycles. Their number one selling motorcycles are middleweights, they're you know upright, you know, sport touring. Harley is racing their core product. And I think that's what makes this so impactful. And so important for us to be successful in it. A 
ride longer and treat your ass with some respect already. Get hooked up with a premium butt buffer seat cushion. This company of bikers developed a super thin hospital grade seat cushion made of solid and elastic materials and it's unlike those damn gel pads that'll leak if they are punctured. Oh, I don't like my ass to leak. The butt buffer is designed not to slide around your seat, fits all motorcycles, installs in seconds, easily cleans, and yep, helps dampen those darn vibrations. With plenty of miles to choose from, they assure you'll have a comfortable ass when riding. Head oh, on over to the Biting Biker store and check out our full line of butt buffer seat cushions. Yeah, just so, to, yeah. Uh, just to just to compliment that, I, I want to say like I was just at the Daytona 500, and to see you know those big manufacturers in the Daytona 500 at the America's Race, right for cars. We have the greatest American motorcycle company, right? Going head to head, right? In like America, right? That's so cool. And that's so like, you know, passionate behind it. And to be able to go and bring that to the world stage that needs USA, we need, you know, they need the American fans and things of that nature. I think that cross breed of, you know, Harley Davidson, into that stage it just goes hand in hand um if you were to kind of compare with you know the nascar thing right like the america and american we're the american greatest american motorcycle racing right yeah which brings me into my uh next point uh how have the fans been as far as the hardcore harley fans and you know comparatively to other disciplines that you've ridden for me Mm. i mean yeah, I'm going to just go f- back from dirt track side. Like I won a championship in with Harley in the production series. And then I had a really bad year the second year and the fans that stuck behind Harley. I mean, I had longer lines because I was the only Harley out there. And that's a true testament to the brand and to the loyalty that goes behind Harley Davidson. The only other fans that I could see that were close to that was when I was in uh, BSB. Those fans are true diehard motorcycle fans, just like the Harley community is to the Harleys. And I would say that they might be some of the strongest, most loyal fans there are in the racing community. Kyle, you got anything I on think that? We've, I, I don't even think that we have sparked the big takeoff of growth yet. I think that people are still learning about King of the Baggers. And I think that word of mouth is our, is our number one way that we're still going to grow this thing. And, you know, people are, have only been going to these events for one or two years. They have to come to the event. They have to have the good experience and then they have to tell their friends to come with them next year. And I think that, you know, we're just starting that process of year over year events that I think Harley riders are so accustomed to, you know, every year they go to bike week, every year they go to Laconia, they go to, you know, wherever the bike rally is, you know, these races are now the new rallies. And I think it's just going to take a couple of years before they truly blow up. I think we're on the verge of that still. I don't think we've even seen, you know, the, the big takeoff that's to come in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, I can't agree more with that, just as I've seen it build and build momentum and all of us getting excited about it. Uh, maybe some of the, you know, audience doesn't understand their consumers, Hardy Davidson writers, uh, you know, your traditional writer. They may not understand, you know, why you're out there on the track. It's more than, we all love racing, that's awesome, right? But there's benefits uh, beyond that to the motor company. Can you kind of explain w- what we get out of you guys being out there on the track with these bikes? Take it, big man. I I don't understand the question. Like, so what exactly? Maybe like some of the things you guys are out there testing and things like that. How does that directly result? And we get it back as a consumer. So it's good for us as consumers. You guys being out there on the track is basically what I'm getting at. Oh yeah, I mean you're going to see it not only in the touring platform. You're going to see it across the board. You know, we also have you know the Pan America teams that are competing in the super hooligans class, you know, we're pushing the, the Pan Americas to a new limit as well. That's all feeding back into product development, um, for that whole platform of the revolution max engine and, and chassis. Um, uh, I mean the CVOST that, you know, we came out with in 
2024 is, is the direct product relationship to racing, you know, carbon fiber components, the new high output engine, uh, track mode electronics in a road going Harley Davidson motorcycle, something that probably nobody ever saw coming ever. And, you know, I think those are just some examples that were, that are outward facing that, that are truly a, a direct tie to what we've been doing on racing. But there are so many things that happen in product development, little improvements to certain components that we see failures on, on the racetrack, all translate into product. You will not break anything bigger or sooner than you will on a racetrack. And, you know, that can only accelerate development for the whole platform. Yep. Awesome. Well said, man. Uh, so the, talking about momentum of the sport, uh, you know, are you guys hearing anything or should we look in the future? Uh, we don't, obviously we talked American made right now, you know, uh, motorcycles involved in this thing. Have the import bike manufacturers showed any interest to in this, you know, BMW, Yamaha, Honda, all that. And if they are, or that were to happen in the future, do you think that's a good thing for the overall sport? I think that, um, and, I, and I've personally pushed Moto America to pursue those opportunities to bring other manufacturers into King of the Baggers, but I think that there's there's a lot of technical reasons that make it really difficult. You've got so many different types of engine configurations across the board between BMW and Honda and Yamaha. You've got shaft drive, you've got belt drive, you've got you know all of these different things that you know, it's already difficult for Moto America to balance just the Harley Davidson and Indian. And they've done a really good job at that. In my opinion, you know, we've had a little bit better chassis. Indians had a little bit more horsepower on us the last couple of years, and it creates really good racing. When you start to add third, fourth, fifth manufacturers into the fold, it just has to be done very deliberately and very carefully. Um, but I think that we have not really seen that interest from other manufacturers. I think that if BMW or Yamaha came to Moto America and said, we want in, there's no way they're turning them away. So I think that the reason we're not seeing it is not necessarily is they're not allowed to be, but I don't know that there's been a big push from those manufacturers to be a part of it. And I couldn't tell you the reason why that might be. Okay. Uh, so, Favorite track, I want to ask. Kyle, since you're on, I'll just start with you. What's your favorite track and kind of why? Road America, hands down. It's the most beautiful facility, beautiful area of the country. It's in Wisconsin and Harley's backyard. That doesn't hurt, but you know, having a four mile racetrack through the through the scenery at, at Road America, they call it the National Park of Speed for a reason. And uh I love going up there every year. I've won a lot of races there in multiple different classes. And yeah, it's, it's just always my favorite event that I kind of circle on the calendar. Yeah. That's a one I would love to get out to and see in person for sure on that track. Uh, James, how about you? Uh, my overall favorite track is, uh, Aston TT in the Netherlands. Uh, I've always, it was my first British super sport podium. Um, I love the layout. I just absolutely love that track. I love that whole atmosphere there. Um, and yeah, in America, it'd probably be Laguna. Even though I haven't had the most amazing results at Laguna, I would still consider it one of my favorite tracks because of all the different elevations. It's very, very technical track. Um, and it requires uh, a lot of thought into going fast. And I think that's something in, you know, racing is like the more difficult kind of like really intrigues you. So those are probably my two Europe and America. Okay. So leading up to Daytona here, uh, we're getting close uh, to that race. I know you guys are, you know, got it in your minds and stuff. What are the, some of the things that are going through your mind or, and or personal challenges um, at Daytona at that track? Um, what you like about it, maybe what you don't like, and some of the things that you know going into that you really need to focus on for that race. You can both answer that. I mean, things I'm thinking about are just, you know, how the bike has changed since we were there last year, which there's been a lot of changes. So there's a lot of things to consider on how the bike will handle, how certain elements of the track will 
make the bike react compared to last year, watching last year's races back, looking at data from last year, you know, we're piecing together a base setup for us to start, you know, the weekend. And, uh, yeah, I mean, for me, the challenge is <laughs> in baggers, I've never finished both races at Daytona. So, uh, we need to make sure that we've got the, uh, the components and, uh, the wherewithal to, to be there and score points on both days. But, uh, I think we've got a really good shot at winning. We won the second race there last year. So, uh, I've got some good confidence going into it again this year. I think for me, it's a little different because I am on the new platform, even though we've had a, a massively successful test, things are different at the race day. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see. We've got some more time on track, how that plays into it. Um, Daytona is always unique, right? Like you could be the fastest guy there and still lose because of the draft and the way that whole thing works out. And, and being the first race, everybody's like a little nervous, like, you know, antsy on what did everybody do over the winter? Who's like flying? Who's got everything? Who's got their shit together? You could say, um, even in, the pits, just the way the atmosphere, how the teams come together. Some teams don't see each other over the winter and this is their first race back together. So everyone's rusty and how the pit board and just all, there's so many little things at Daytona that can go wrong. Uh, so I think for me, just having a tight unit and making sure that like Kyle said, we finished both races. Um, I'm pretty confident every year I've been somewhat competitive. I think I've got, you know, the best bike I've had there in a long time. So I would expect we'd be competitive, but again, Daytona's a crapshoot. As long as we come out of there safe and healthy, I'm super happy. Awesome, man. So it looks like Thursday, so Thursday, March 7th, practice quals one, uh, Friday, March 8th, quals two and race one. And of course the fun mission King of the baggers challenge. And then Saturday, March 9th, Mission King of the Baggers race two at Daytona. Are and I think you guys said, are we looking at? Are we on nine tracks this? Year? Are you on nine or eight tracks? Eight tracks because we're going to go to Coda twice now. Oh, okay, okay, all right. So a lot of races coming up. Kyle, uh, where can people find out more about you and follow your social media? Here's your time to plug. Uh, follow me on. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. It's pretty much at Kyle Wyman on everything. Um, I know we have a, uh, should have a new race team website coming out pretty soon as well. Hopefully by the time this airs and you know, you can follow us. And of course on all of the Harley Davidson channels, you can see all the racing updates as well as in the membership app. So um, yeah, follow along. We're on there. We're active. James. Yep, at James Rispoli, I'm on all the major ones. I've axed TikTok, but you'll find it. It's, you know, at James Rispoli. So, yeah, follow along and we'll give you updates. Yeah, it's awesome. I appreciate you guys being on. I know you have a hard stop. I want to give a little bit of flexibility there, so I'm going to let you go. But uh, thanks for taking the time to hang out with us here on the Law Abiding Biker YouTube channel and podcast today. And uh, we look forward to the season, guys. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in person again soon at some event or something, or at one of the tracks maybe, all right? Sounds good. Okay, we'll guys. also be at the Speedway on Tuesday uh, before the race, signing autographs. You meet the whole team, see the race bikes. So if you're at the Midway, at the Speedway, Tuesday before the race during Bike Week, you can catch us out there like 1 p.m. Awesome. Good info, man. All right, guys. Be safe and uh, catch you on the flip side, man. Thank you so Thank much. You. you bet. Laters. Oh, guys, I really hope you enjoyed that interview with Kyle and James. I know I did. I could have kept going on, uh, but hopefully I asked the questions uh, that will matter to you guys to kind of give you a look into King of the Baggers, or even if you're already following it, uh, even a deeper dive into what goes on uh, within this sport. It is blowing up. It's not going anywhere. As I already mentioned up front, I'm excited for the 2024 season. But uh, I do want to thank those guys, obviously, for taking the time. They're busy leading up to Daytona, but they took the time right here exclusively. Uh, Law Abiding Biker podcast and YouTube channel. Again, the video will be up on YouTube if you want to see it uh, in video form. Lurch has been busy at the store. He's got something he wants to talk about. Before I get into that, I want to say we love our patrons and we'll never balk. Bye. 
Network. Oh, yeah. A flat donation, but we'd like to thank the following people for donating. Angel Negron of Chicago, Illinois. Bill Howell of somewhere in Florida. I guess I didn't take the time to put the city down there. Sorry, Bill. Uh, Danny Huff of Alberton, Montana. Chuck Leiter of Goose Creek, South Carolina. Mark Quick of Bel Air, Texas. And Andrew McLaughlin of Stanwood, Washington, right in our backyard. Lawabidingbiker.com forward slash donate. Uh, you know, if you guys want to just leave a flat donation, we appreciate that so much. And some of those donations are tips left in the store when people make purchases. You can leave a tip, and we are humbled. Uh, number one, that you're shopping in our store. Number two, that you're leaving us a tip. God, that just uh, it, it just amazes me. It's, it's hard for me to wrap my head around. All right, Lurch. Call to action. Uh, street tires. I've added tires to our store. We've got uh, currently just touring tires, but I can get you anything you want that's in uh, drag. Just let me know what the part number is, and I'll get them ordered up for you. But right now, so far, we have the Michelin Commander 3s, the touring tires. I know those are real popular. That's a high-mileage tire. Uh, then when we've got some uh, Dunlop American Elites. And then the Metzlers. We've got a Marathon and we've got a Cruise Tech. So the Marathon is the ME888 tire. It's a high mileage tire. And the Metzler Cruise Tech is becoming a real popular tire. Um, we're looking forward to testing some of these. Uh, they're sticky. They say the Metzler Cruise Tech, if I'm not mistaken, is a good replacement for the stock Harley Dunlop. Like it's going to perform the same as what they're similar. Right? I would say potentially even better. Okay. Oh, got a little bit more. Can't wait. Yeah, they got a little bit more um, tread and siping on the sides for when you're leaned over going through corners and whatnot. Nice. So they're supposed to be a performance bagger tire. It's going to be a good one for us to try out. But anyways, uh, go on on over to the store and check out our street tires. And again, if there's a size or something different that you want, let me know and I'll get that ordered up for you. Yep, guys. And remember, you're going to get them the same price from us as anybody else and uh we're gonna get them out shipped to you we've got them ready to go in stock guys we'll get them coming your way and you're supporting us the small guys not the big conglomerates uh it means a lot to us every sale is something that means a lot to us and uh, we see it's funny enough that we see names and i know lurch does the more he operates in stories like yeah i know that name he's purchased before so it's uh it's a lot more personal experience and uh, we appreciate it so very much guys thanks for tuning in 